Warning, the following video contains personal opinions and may contain potential bias. Anyone sensitive to someone else's opinion may want to turn away now. But thanks for watching anyways. Now I'm a big fan of the Pokemon anime, to the point that I really could and probably should be doing critical analysis videos of the Pokemon anime or its many movies. Though doing reviews of every single episode of the Pokemon anime might be a bit too much for me. That being said though, for all the love and praise I could give the Pokemon anime, especially with how much it's improved over the years, there have been moments and decisions it's made over the course of its long-standing history that are just inexcusable, kind of facepalm worthy, and kind of, well, indefensible. And today, we'll be discussing just that, as we'll be taking a look at the top 10 dumbest Pokemon anime decisions. Now, every single bit of this is incredibly subjective and is coming purely from a writing standpoint. And while some of these fumbles have been rectified, others haven't, and we'll be discussing those as we come to them. So, without that much else to go into, let's hop right to it. So welcome everyone to the Silver League's Top 10 Dumbest Pokemon Anime Decisions. Number 10. Ash giving away Primeape. Alright, we're starting out with a softball here because things are going to get pretty ranty from here on forward. This one just kind of always irked me. Season 1 Ash was notorious for giving away his Pokemon. But this one, even as a kid, I felt kind of just frustrated at. Because the episode where Ash initially got Primate was actually quite good. And in fact is one of my personal favorites. Plus it was an interesting quirk to have a Pokemon that didn't listen to Ash. Though lo and behold, this would end up becoming a plot point later on in the series with Charizard. But with Primate, we have an episode where Ash enters what is effectively a Pokemon boxing tournament. And eventually through the power of friendship and teamwork, they come out victorious. And then with that, Ash and Primate finally become friends. And then the character of the week that Ash and friends met in this episode, who encouraged them to enter the boxing tournament, comes up to Ash and asks if he can take the Primate and train it to become the next biggest champion. And Ash agrees. Um, Ash, you're the trainer! Train your Pokemon! That was always the biggest complaint people had about you, and here you are, giving away a Pokemon who you've earned the respect of, to a guy you've met only today! What?! This annoys me just because what was the point in getting Primeape in the first place? To have a boxing episode? That was effectively a filler episode? I don't get it! It's annoying and he never got the Primeape back and it's really just one of those decisions that just really, really, really baffle me. But I suppose that was a weird quirk of the pre-Porygon episodes. Because after that, Ash doesn't quite give away his Pokemon as routinely, but when he does, it's still, you know, kind of bothersome. <coughs> Number 9. Pikachu losing to a level 5 Snivy. Okay, writers, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to show off the imposing power of this rival. I get that. And I also understand that levels don't always apply to the Pokemon anime, even though there was an episode in the original anime that outright mentioned levels, but it never really explained how it works in context to the whole Pokemon training thing. So I understand, you want to make the rival look imposing and powerful, but the thing is, he wasn't imposing and powerful. He just started! The Snivy was just an ordinary Snivy he picked out. There was no particular reason why it would be imposing or powerful. And I also understand that Pikachu was weakened at the time. That was the whole point of the very first episode. But here's the thing. That first episode of Pokemon Best Wishes aired on September 23rd, 2010. 2010, really? Jeez. But you want to know what happened in the anime just a month prior in August? Pikachu tied with a freaking Latios! And it didn't get any assistance either. None of Ash's other Pokemon touched the Latios. It one-shotted all of them, but Pikachu, on its own, managed to tie with a Latios. People complained to no end about that Tobias fight, but the fact that Pikachu tied with a Latios makes a statement. But I also understand that Best Wishes was supposed to be effectively a soft reboot of the Pokemon anime, approachable for new viewers who might have been overwhelmed by the sheer massive number of episodes preceding Best Wishes also following in line with the spirit of the Gen 5 games, which were also trying to serve as a soft reboot for the Pokemon franchise as a whole. So I get all of that. It was supposed to be a reboot, Pikachu was weakened, and he wanted to impress and show that this rival was serious. But it wasn't a good look, especially when the fond memories of the Diamond and Pearl series were still fresh in the minds of hardcore fans and even just casual fans who might have been watching the anime leading up to that moment. 
To see Pikachu lose so easily to an ordinary Snivy that was given out to a brand new fresh trainer who's supposed to be Ash's rival, but this was not a good first impression. It was a baffling decision that to this day, I simply can't defend. I can make sense of it, but I can't defend it. Number 8 Ash losing the Unova League to Cameron. Oh boy! Say what you will about the Sinnoh League. Say whatever you want about the Kalos League. But this one, this league in particular, was BS. Utter BS. I am sorry, this was stupid. Even factoring in the whole reboot ideology of the Best Witches anime. Really? Cameron? The guy who was about to sleep in through signups. The guy who only brought five Pokemon to the battle, thinking it was only a 5v5. And even then, Ash had major type advantages to Cameron's team. And even on top of that, you had an Earther friendly rival right there who seemed like he was just gift wrapped to be the trainer who would beat Ash and humble him and inspire him to continue on with his journey with a new vigor and new just lease for exploration and just push that message that I say is pivotal to the Pokemon franchise and showing you can't always win. There are other trainers who are simply stronger than you, but the lesson learned is to not be discouraged and not give up. You don't get that with Cameron! Cameron literally won thanks to Deus Ex Evolution! The thing that always had Ash win! So it's like, wait, is this Ash getting a taste of his own medicine? The way Ash lost the Kanto League was stupid, but in retrospect, it really works from a narrative standpoint because it shows how amateur Ash was as a trainer. And for him to lose because his Charizard wouldn't listen to him was a very humbling experience. There's no lesson to be learned when you lose thanks to Evolution X Machina, and this isn't even commenting on the stupidity that was his actual rival of the season battle, where it was a 1v1 with Pikachu vs Superior, and that was it. No extra storyline, no nothing. There was no point to any of this. The whole league honestly was stupid, but that final match is just the worst. There is no redeeming it. This is easily the worst league we've ever had, and I don't think anything could possibly top it. I say that now. Well, we'll see how Alola turns out, but it can't be this bad. It can't. There were so many bad decisions here that it's a struggle to pick one. But you know what's honestly worse in my mind than all of this? Well... Number 7. Completely skipping the Dragon-type gym in Best Wishes. Okay, the Skylar gym was stupid. Really stupid. That whole fiasco with Elisa's gym was really stupid. Really dumb. But you know what? We knew that Iris was the Dragon type gym leader, at least in one version of the Gen 5 games, and we knew that it had to add to some interesting drama at some point. Maybe, just maybe, Ash would have to face Iris as a test for her to be ready as a Dragon type gym leader, to fulfill her responsibilities. And maybe that'll put Ash and Iris in a tough situation, where Ash needs this badge in order to qualify for the Unova League, while Iris needs to win this battle, or else Drayden may not find her worthy to be the successor as the Dragon-type gym leader. Do we get any of that? No! Instead, we get a shoehorned advertisement for Black and White 2, where Ash is instead battling Roxy as the 8th gym leader, which isn't actually reflective of her spot as a gym leader in Black and White 2, where she's the second gym leader. And on top of that, it's a 6v3 battle. Ash has 6 Pokemon, and it still comes down to a 1v1 showdown. You had 6 Pokemon, she had 3, and somehow, SOMEHOW, it still comes down to a narratively dramatic 1v1. Yes, it works for dramatics, but it also makes Ash look very weak, very stupid, and kind of explains why he did so poorly in the Unova League in the first place, I guess. But if that was your point, that's still very stupid. And again, you completely skipped the Dragon Gym entirely. When we actually see Drayden, it has nothing to do with the Dragon Gym. The whole Irish Drayden thing has nothing to do with it. Nothing. We completely skipped the gym entirely. It has no relevance. Nothing. It's just... Oh my god. And yes, I know I'm packing in a lot of best wishes hate, which I know is making some of you very happy. But oh trust me, it's not gonna stop. Let's keep going! <sighs> Number 6. Pikachu forgetting Volt Tackle. 
for Electro Ball. <sighs> okay, I understand. It was a new generation, there were new moves, you wanted the leading Pokemon of your anime to use one of those brand new moves in the new games, but Volt Tackle. Volt Tackle was a move that had a storyline associated with it where Pikachu over the course of several episodes gradually learned this brand new amazing move that was exclusive to Emerald, which in itself was basically an advertisement for Pokemon Emerald. But nevertheless, it stayed, it remained, it became somewhat of an iconic move for Pikachu throughout the rest of the advanced generation and especially throughout the Diamond and Pearl anime. And from a narrative standpoint, it was effectively a way for Pikachu to use an electric style attack up close and personal with an opponent. For that dramatic shonen anime head clash, it was a very cool and dramatic move to see in action. And when the Best Wishes anime was reanimating and revamping plenty of the attacks to look a lot flashier and a lot cooler, Volt Tackle was one of the moves that got a fresh coat of CG paint to really flash up and pizzazz the move and make it look just all the more awesome. And then three ducklets drop an umbrella on Pikachu, and somehow this turns Volt Tackle into Electro Ball. All that effort for that new animation tossed out the window in favor of another projectile style attack that, as far as the context of the anime is concerned, served the exact same purpose as Thunderbolt, where it was a move that Pikachu would fling at the bad guys, would hit them, cause an explosion, or just, you know, send them flying or defeated. There was opportunities where Electro Ball could have been used for more dramatic effect, could have been used to at least distinguish it somehow from Thunderbolt, but very rarely did this happen. Occasionally, you could have Pikachu doing a cool spin where it would slap the Electro Ball, which in itself was pretty alright, but from a narrative standpoint, it didn't really change anything, and the dynamics of how it functioned in conjunction with Thunderbolt was pretty interchangeable. And thank Arceus that all these years later, it would be rectified with Pikachu forgetting Electro Ball in favor of Electro Web. Now, I know that doesn't really make much sense either, and coincidentally, the way Pikachu learned it was actually quite similar in nature to how he ended up learning Electro Ball in the first place, in that he had something clamped down on top of him, and that would in turn turn the move into something else. But you know what? Electro Web actually gives Pikachu a pretty good tech move, so now we have a long range electric attack, a speedy priority attack, and a good physical attack that pretty much serves as Pikachu punching things, with that being Iron Tail. So while this was one of the most rage inducing decisions they've ever done, they did at least in some way apologize for it. But that being said, there are some other Pokemon who have had their movesets shifted around over the years, and not for the better. Number 5. Charizard for getting Seismic Toss. Oh my god, best wishes. Why do you keep doing this? I'm not hating on best wishes just because I feel like hating on it. But dear god, you brought back Charizard. I get it. Nostalgia baiting. It's a thing you've been doing for way too goddamn long now. But you bring back Charizard, a fan favorite across several generations. A Pokemon who ended up serving Ash quite awesomely throughout the Battle Frontier saga. You finally bring him back. And what do you do? You have him forget his most iconic move. Seismic Toss was a move used so much throughout the Pokemon anime. It was responsible for so many of Charizard's most iconic moments, for so many of Ash's most important wins. The battle with Blaine, the battle with Claire, the battle with Gary. This move that had its own silly animation where it would have Charizard spinning around the earth and would end up being reflected in the games and you just get rid of it. In favor of what? Dragon Tail? Wing Attack? Ah. 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 Now I know in game, Seismic Toss on a Charizard honestly isn't really that good since, well, Seismic Toss is based on level, and I'm guessing that means that Charizard is a really high level if it always ends up KOing the Pokemon. But in the series, it always came off as this really awesome, just hard hitting attack. We're spinning with so much force, the swing down just knocks out the Pokemon, and it was always exciting to see. And we don't get that in Best Wishes. Instead, Charizard's moveset is effectively ruined, and it's just downright saddening and embarrassing, and just... Why? Why? But, for all the Best Wishes hate that I've been piling on, and I swear, again, not doing this on purpose, there is one more Best Wishes moment that was, in my opinion, a dumber decision that is the crowning achievement of dumb Best Wishes decisions. And that dubious honor goes to... Number 4! 
Meowth pretending to be a good guy with no lasting impact. Now, even though I've dedicated literally half this list to pretty much bashing on Best Wishes, Best Wishes did have a lot of good things going for it. In theory, Team Rocket no longer being bumbling idiots and actually being competent and mildly evil and scheming was a good thing. Diginat post the first season, so to speak, or post the what was supposed to be the introduction of Team Plasma and returning them at least to their white outfits, but that didn't completely stop Team Rocket. They were still scheming, they still occasionally had multi-parter episodes, and they weren't in every single episode with a robot or some dumb half brain scheme. And one of these, in theory, really interesting multi-parter schemes was a small mini-saga where Meowth seemingly had amnesia and pretty much joined our main cast as a good guy. This was legitimately interesting. It was different. It was a mild shakeup to the dynamics that was actually quite intriguing to see. Now, it is eventually revealed that Meowth was faking it the whole time, all in a scheme to, well, capture all of Ash and Friends' Pokemon, along with many others, which in itself was somewhat of a letdown that, well... That's all it boiled down to? Well, alright. Again, it was an interesting multi-parter, but the biggest disappointment and the worst decision out of all of it was... There was no lasting impact. There was very, very mild implications at the end of the multi-parter, but pretty much after this, it's never brought up, it's never a lingering plot point, and at no point ever does it actually factor in future episodes. The fact that they would go through all this effort to make this interesting setup with Ash and friends actually becoming friends and trusting me out only to have it never affect anything and never be brought up ever again is sorely disappointing. At no point does he ever consider the good times he had with them, at no point does he think back upon it, at no point do they think back upon it, and at no point is it ever actually used as a plot point for whether or not maybe Meowth will want to turn good. Nope, nothing. Just dropped like any other plot point. And this is something that happened a lot in Best Wishes, where interesting ideas are brought up, new things are presented, and they're pretty much dropped and never utilized again. And it was always disappointing each and every time. But this is a plot point that always stuck out to me as one of the worst aspects of Best Wishes, where you had a storyline right there, and you did nothing with it. And to me, it is honestly the most disappointing aspect of Best Wishes because it's something that I could easily see Pokemon Sun and Moon doing, but I suppose we'll have to wait and see on that one. <sighs> so, with all the dumb decisions that Best Wishes has done out of my system, what could possibly be worse that wasn't from Best Wishes? Well, putting my nostalgic glasses off for a second, what we have next is... Number 3... 52 episodes between the 7th and 8th badges in the Diamond and Pearl anime. I love Generation 4. A lot of people love the Diamond and Pearl anime. Generally speaking, a lot of people hold it up as one of the best points of the Pokemon anime period. And for many, it's where the anime peaked. That being said, I don't know if people quite remember just how bad the filler was throughout Diamond and Pearl. When it was a plot-centric episode, it was stellar. It was amazing. Everything with Paul, everything with the gyms, everything with stuff like Counter Shield, all of that stuff, amazing. How many of you remember it took 38 episodes to get from the seventh badge to the first attempt at the eighth badge? And in between all of that, plot things did happen. We did have major rival battle moments, a couple evolutions, a couple caught Pokemon, but that first attempt got interrupted by Team Rocket and Team Rocket and Diamond and Pearl was probably the most repetitive and obnoxious and just Oh, irritating of the entire franchise. Way too many dumb add-ons to their motto, and practically every episode boiled down to Team Rocket trying to capture Pikachu with the help of a giant robot they got. It was tiresome, it was annoying, and for them, after such a long wait, to interrupt the 8th gym battle with their own dumb plot nonsense AGAIN was pretty irritating. And was the next episode the second attempt? No! No it wasn't! We had to wait 12 more episodes for the second attempt. And again, it is worth noting that plot things did happen within these 12 episodes. Pretty much the finale to Dawn's storyline. And then, then we get the second attempt. So to give perspective, of the 52 episodes between those two badges, 23 of them are arguably not filler. These are episodes where either someone catches a new Pokemon, a rival battle happens, a big competition happens, something relevant happening. Less than half of the 52 episodes 
it is considered something that you should actually watch if you want to get the full Diamond and Pearl experience while trying to trim out as much filler as possible. And the fact that we had to wait three months, three months for the second attempt after 38 episodes is just... Ah! I legitimately think we could have had the 8th gym battle and then have Dawn's storyline be wrapped up and then go into the Pokemon League because literally two episodes after Ash acquires the 8th badge, we're at the Pokemon League. Which I suppose is accurate to how long it takes to get to the Pokemon League in the games. It's just a pity we had to literally go through a year of episodes between these two badges. <sighs> well, Diamond and Pearl was notorious for filler because there's still two more things that I feel were dumber than this. And next up... Number two. Jesse's entire Pokemon coordinator slash performer career. Initially, this list was going to be the top 10 Pokemon anime betrayals. But then upon doing some research of the origins of the top 10 anime betrayals meme, I felt like, well, hmm, it might get the wrong message across. But this was going to be number one, because dear God, is this a betrayal to Jesse as a character? But from a running standpoint, this was just a weird and baffling and kind of dumb decision. Mainly because, well, Jesse deserves so much better. Throughout Advanced Generation, Diamond and Pearl, and especially in X and Y, her performances were simply lovely. They were amazing. They were thematically relevant to her character, to her Pokemon. They just worked so much better than all of the contemporaries she was up against, especially most of our main protagonists. I'm sorry, Serena's performances sucked compared to Jesse. Jesse's Pokemon, thanks to them being all the more creepy and ghoulish Pokemon due to them being the bad guys, actually lended itself to her Pokemon being very thematically similar and appropriate. Her Jack and the Beanstalk Halloween inspired performance is just amazing. In Diamond and Pearl, I admit, her coordinator performances weren't as strong, just because her Pokemon were thematically more of a mixed bag, but still, she always had strong performances, and somehow, she's always depicted as the loser who is never destined to win. And that's just not fair! Honestly, she should have been a proper rival to the Poke Gals that Ash was traveling with, who was doing many of these performances. She sort of was, but she was never the rival who was the finalist. And that being said, each and every time, the Poke Gal would lose, and the Earth One would be crowned the winner. Wouldn't it be nice for Jessie to win to get that acknowledgement? Then I don't know, her disguise falls and maybe she's exposed as a member of Team Rocket and as a result she can't claim her earned victory because, well, she's technically a criminal? That could have worked! It would be unfair to Jessie still, but from a narrative standpoint, at least for a moment she got the acknowledgement she deserved because these writers put too much effort into making her performances actually really good! Especially in X and Y, I cannot get over how stupid it is that she was just so cheated! throughout that entire series. Her performances were amazing, and it's not fair that she got the bad rap she deserved, and it had nothing to do with the fact that she was a part of Team Rocket. It was just because the Poke Gal had to be the one who would go up against her rival, and then lose to the rival anyways, making things kind of redundant and very similar to Ash, with the same general metaphor of you can't always win, and to never give up despite the adversity that comes with defeat. So I get all of that, but come on. This was always a dumb decision, and they repeated it three times. <sighs> but, like I said, it was initially going to be number one on the original version of this list, but I made a last minute switch because I had to look inside my heart and think, what's honestly the dumbest decision the Pokemon anime has ever done to me? And without a doubt, number one always lingers in my mind and to this day, it's the one thing that, while I have gotten over, it's still stupid and I will never stand by it and I will never, ever truly understand it. So without further delay... And the number one dumbest Pokemon anime decision is... Ambipom leaving to become a ping pong champion. I repeat, Ambipom leaving to become a ping pong champion. Ping pong champion. Ping pong champion! I hate this plotline. I hate this episode. I hate it so much. I hate the story that they took Ambipom down that led to this. I hate it so much. And I hate, hate how it practically came out of nowhere. The thing I always liked about Ambipom was how clever Generation 3 was integrating the Gen 4 elements into the anime and pretty much foreshadowing Gen 4 for quite some time actually. 
with Gen 4 Pokemon cameoing in video games, movies, and throughout the later half of the Advanced Generation anime. But Ash getting Apom was a very clever move. It gave Ash a brand new Pokemon who had a pretty sassy and interesting personality. It was definitely one of the more colorful Pokemon of Ash's team, and interestingly enough, when Ash would go over to Sinnoh, it was the only other Pokemon that Ash had with him along with Pikachu, and anyone who was in the know with Generation 4 knew what this had to mean. Yes, this was their clever way of introducing a new Generation 4 Pokemon through sneaking it in early in Generation 3 and showing it as one of the brand new evolutions, one of the alluring draws of Generation 4. Now, unfortunately, Ash never got to actually have Ambipom on his team because Apom would end up going over to Dawn because it turns out that Apom didn't really like Pokemon battles and much preferred the world of Pokemon coordinators. And that was fine, because within the context of the Diamond and Pearl anime, it showed how trades worked within the anime. A mechanic made all the more relevant in the age of Wi-Fi, where people could trade with each other online. So that makes sense, and it gave Ash Buizel, which ended up being a really cool Pokemon and very nice addition to his team. So Dawn got Apom, a Pokemon who much preferred the world of Pokemon contests. Great! And not long after she got it, Apom ended up evolving into Ambipom. Again, being a great assortment to her team. But then things changed, and I guess that this was just a fleeting moment for Ambipom, as its focus on contests got distracted by being drawn into the world of Ping Pong. Which I guess is great for a Pokemon who doesn't have actual fingers, but has hands on its two tails. So I guess that works. But the thing is, this episode reminds me of something. You know what it reminds me of? Let's go back to the very beginning of this list. Let's go back to the very bottom of this list. Ash giving away Primeape to the character of the day that they met in an episode where they randomly entered a contest associated with Pokemon doing some kind of human sport with a Pokemon twist. Yeah, the Ambipomp episode is pretty much a 2.0 version of the Primeape episode, except instead of being a Pokemon that Ash only had for a couple episodes, it was a Pokemon shared between two main characters of the show that was cleverly tied in to the series before this one as a way to cross-promote the actual games being sold at the moment, all of these clever ideas, all of this clever setup, all of this clever writing, all amounting to said character being written off to go become a ping pong champion. Because the trainer that Don and Ambipom beat in that episode goes up to them after the tournament and asks if he could take Ambipom to go train it to become a ping pong champion. And Don lets Ambipom decide on this offer. And it accepts! G just... G what? What? Why? Ugh, oh. Oh. I did not realize the irony of this when I made this list and that last minute decision, but dear god, way to go full circle with the stupid nonsense. Diamond and Pearl had some really great moments, but between the 52 episodes between two gyms and this, they are blemishes that I simply cannot ignore. For all the praise, for all the love, this was the dumbest way to write off a Pokemon, share between two main cast members, effectively serving as character building and development between the two, and it's sent off to go play ping pong. If Pokemon ever does another stupid ping pong episode, it'll be too soon. <laughs> oh, for Arceus sakes, you gotta be kidding me. We'll get to that. Oh, trust me. We'll get to that. Ugh. And that was my list for the top 10 dumbest Pokemon anime decisions, and I thank you all for watching. I know this might be a mile-long video where I'm rambling on nonsense about how much I hate certain aspects of writing in the Pokemon anime, but I assure you, all that hate aside, it's all in good fun. It's not stuff I hold onto or hold against the series forever. I've gotten over a lot of it. It's just kind of fun to talk about and discuss in hindsight. And I'm sure, without a doubt, the Pokemon anime has made other dumb decisions that I haven't brought up on this list. And if there's any that have really irked you over the years, let me know in the comments down below, because as always, I love to know what you guys think. But with all of that said, if you want to support the channel and see more videos like this, please consider supporting my Patreon since every dollar goes a long way to making everything like this possible, with stuff like the Janoon War, Pixar in Review, Trading Thoughts, SL Reviews, Let's Plays. It's never a dull moment here, might be kind of crowded and busy at times, but I like to provide variety, and if you like that too, any support goes a long way. But in the meantime guys, I'm Silver August, and I'll catch you all next time.